All right, we are recording. Um, welcome back or welcome to the channel. If you are new here, we create content around um, web design and web development. I kind of focusing a little bit more on web design at the moment, design in general. Um, but yeah, I'm sort of start getting a little bit deeper into web development as well in the future. But for now, uh, I sort of want to talk, take this video to talk about animations. So I've seen like, I've seen it sort of like become more and more um, widespread and common now that like designers generally would finish off their designs and their static designs and then they sort of animate them before like posting them anywhere online, especially like those catchy like dribble shots and, uh, and whatnot. And I always use Adobe After Effects for my animations and you see a little bit of animations as well in this video that have been done by Adobe After Effects. So jitter.video is sort of the tool that I want to talk about in this video, but it's not sort of, it's not a replacement to After Effects, but it is another tool to add to your arsenal of tools when you want to animate something, but you don't want to take too much time, right? You want to animate it quickly, as quick as possible. It's such a time saver. So we'll dive deep on how to use jitter.video. Also talk a little bit about keyframing if you have no idea um, about animation in general. So I just want to like sort of get a point across first on what is the idea of animating because that's sort of gonna help you understand how jitter.video works and how like animation general works so even if you you take these concepts and you can apply them to any animation software so the idea of keyframing is anything that moves any any element that has an animation has a start position and has an end position and that end position and the start position will be animated within a specific time frame. So that is literally what keyframing is. Keyframing is like taking a snapshot of where the where that object or that element starts and where where it ends, and telling the animation software, "I want this motion to happen in let's say a second." And there are things that come into play, such as easing functions, like uh, ease in and ease out, and you know, linear, where sort of, you know, where where that object sort of like speeds up um, or takes off like really quickly, and then sort of slows down towards the end, um, or vice versa. So these are easing functions. Those are just like sort of telling that object how it moves in space according to the time that it has for that specific animation or motion time time frame so that is like just very quickly um like how how sort of animation works we'll dive deep into this um and sort of like see how we can do that with jitter dot video all right so as soon as you open up jitter and i mean sign up for jitter and go to your dashboard you can start by creating a new file where you know you can add um, rectangles and shapes basic shapes images you know you can even control the color the, f the opacity if you want to add stroke uh, the position of the stroke so on and so forth and then you can go to the animate tab and then sort of select a new animation where you know you can select one of the presets and you can start designing and animating this way uh, but what we will be doing uh, since we already have a design on figma uh, i'm just going to delete this and sort of head over to figma and this is sort of the starting position that we have we uh, i've designed this on a previous tutorial so if you're interested in knowing how uh, we've designed the multi-step form. You can watch the video, but for now, this is sort of the starting point that we have. And I have grouped everything here um, as such. So here's the sidebar um, and like everything has been grouped in auto layouts. Um, not everything, but you know, just the groups that I would like to manipulate individually um in our animation so that's done so what i'll do is i'll go to plugins and jitter if you don't have the pl uh, jitter plugin installed you can go to file up uh, to the drop down up here and then plugins and then search for jitter and then just run the plugin um it should ask you sort of to sign up um, or something or to link that account but and then ask you to select a frame or a layer so make sure that you select the full 
um, like frame that you want to animate. So for us, we are going to select the jitter animation frame and I'm just going to click on this button and it's going to load up and then it's going to ask you to open in jitter and it's going to go ahead and design everything for you um, in a jitter artboard. Um, and then you can sort of manipulate individual uh, groups or even like elements. So that's done. Uh, now we can start animating. So I'm going to start by grouping everything together uh, by clicking Control G and then I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to call this um, full form and I'm going to give this a new animation. I sort of want it to slide in from the bottom up. So I'm going to click this direction. You know, I think maybe give it a 250 pixels because I don't want it to like uh, climb from all the way down. So um, I think this looks good. Um, we can like change the easing functions to make it sort of ac accelerate or like there are like um, nice uh, presets here. Like, but I prefer sort of natural because that sort of like eases in really nice. As you can see, it sort of slides in, but opacity is animating like throughout the duration. So I don't want this. I want the opacity to sort of like animate quicker and then for the movement to sort of happen. Um, so what I'll do here is I will right click um, on the timeline and then convert to actions. That sort of gives me control over both the opacity and the move. Um, and I sort of want it to um, the opacity to animate a little faster. It's 100% opacity and then to complete the movement. So if I hold the opacity control and move it um, like all the way to the right, then obviously the movement is going to complete first and then the the animation of the movement, which I don't want. So I'm going to drag that back. And now the next step is I sort of want this to scale up and move up and go into position. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to select this preset right here and it sort of like moves it up and then scales it down as if like it's sort of like falling in its place and i sort of want the scale to be uh, 105 to start at like 105 percent so i can control that again i convert to actions i sort of like move move things around i want it to appear a lot faster so again opacity you know i don't want it to like uh, be like half visible and then sort of manipulate the keyframes to look the way I want them to look um, in terms of like a final animation. Let's just rename everything here. So I'll, I'll rename my layers just so I can know uh, what layer I'm animating. So there's that. Um, I think the next step here would be to have like a nice tagger effect to these steps right here. So. I'm just going to go in uh, into my groups and into my frames right here and I can select a new animation for each step. But as you can see here, it's telling me like this is an image. It's not really a text layer or anything. And the reason why it's because I had a background blur on Figma and uh, Jitter.video currently doesn't support background blur, which is fine, uh, but it exported it as a um, uh, exported it as an image, which is completely fine. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to give it a slight in animation um, again for the next step. So select the next frame and give it a slight in from the left to the right. And I'm just going to repeat that for um, steps one to four. And now that we play it back, we can see this really like smooth stagger effect. Um, which like ties in everything pretty cool. I think this looks pretty dope. So let's just zoom out here a bit and see where we are. Okay, I think it looks great, but we do need um, to sort of make the sidebar appear quicker. So I'm just gonna move um, the start point of all of these animations. And what that does, it does, does two things. It sort of makes the animation appear faster, uh, makes the animation, uh, makes the elements appear faster, but also uh, increasing the duration on the animations, make them go slower. So it sort of everything feels slower. I love the stagger effects here, but maybe they're taking too long. So I'm just gonna adjust, um, adjust things here. And as you sort of play around with, with the, with the timings and, you know, and, when everything animates, you sort of get the hang of it. Now, the next step is this sort of personal information 
uh, section here of the form and I again wanted to slide in from the bottom up. A 300 pixel seems a little bit too much so I'm going for 50 pixels and that's going to move it from down to up um, by 50 pixels. A nice animation again doing the same thing with the opacity i kind of don't like the opacity to like animate um, in a long time i want the opacity to get done quickly and then to see as the element is moving up at 100 percent opacity um, again i'm sort of adjusting the timings here i if you want it if you want something to appear first then just move the whole uh, timeline of that specific element a little backwards and that sort of makes it appear faster if you want it to go slower then increase the, the whole duration of that specific uh, element animation and here I select everything and just give them a little bit more time because I want it to be go a little slower and um, down here I increase the timeline of my full animation to uh, have a duration of 11 seconds uh, because I sort of want to uh, give it like a, an exit animation as well. But I also want to give people sort of some time to see the form before animating it out. So you can have a few like moments for a few final adjustments. So like feel free to keep like playing around with the keyframes to sort of reach to a point where you think the animation looks nice. You sort of get the hang of it now so it would um, it only is a matter of time until like you find the perfect timings and when exactly you want certain elements to appear or disappear from, from the screen. Now, after I am happy with um, the like entry animation, we should figure out an exit animation. So if we select the full form and go to the out tab, we can animate it out and down and sort of align that to be towards the end of my timeline. And again, um, adjust the, how slow or fast you want the animation to be. Again, for the opacity, I do the same thing. And uh, that's it. Um, that sort of has the animation entry in, gives the viewer some time to see what uh, the UI is about, and then it slides out. And once that's done, you can export in different uh, formats. I do have the premium version here, so I can export in like um, 2X and like higher qualities. But even with the free version, you can export basically with every possible um, extension. So I'm going just for GIF or GIF, depends on what you call it. And then uh, I adjust it here to be 60 FPS and the quality to be 100%. I think you will have limitations if you haven't purchased the premium version. But once you are done um, uh, with selecting the specific settings that you want for your export, it should be done in a minute or two. And it should give you the final um, file. And this is sort of how it looks like. I think it looks pretty smooth. And it literally took us like, what, 10 minutes, maybe even less. Uh, to achieve something that looks pretty decent in my opinion and be, like way faster than if you want to do something like this on on Adobe After Effects it would take you it would take you much much longer um, unless like you are <laughs> super quick with After Effects but then again maybe your RAM uh, or your storage is not so this is how you sort of animate something really quickly on jitter.video obviously we didn't go into a lot of details about Jitter. There is a bunch more that you can do with it. Go ahead and play with the tool. Uh, let me know what you got, what you guys think about this. And um, if you did find this video helpful or it would help your, um, you know, your process in any way, uh, I'd appreciate if you leave a thumbs up, uh, maybe a comment on what you'd like to see in the future. Um, sort of still shaping the future of this channel. I don't know exactly where I want to go, but yeah, subscribe, all of the good stuff, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.